Hi, I'm Simon Foster and I'm here to tell you a little bit about Affinity Photo by Serif. Now this is a panic button tutorial, okay, so what do I mean by that? What I mean is, the first time you load it up, you get something like this. And you see all the panels and all the toolboxes and everything like that. The temptation is just to close it down in a panic, go away, never come back. But you don't have to learn all of it all in one go. To get started, you only need a few things. And in an upcoming tutorial, I'll tell you the five basic things you need to consider when you're editing every photo. But for now, let's take a look at it and just try and ease some of your troubles. All right. Okay, I've just switched the screen recording software, so chances are the sound quality will be different and probably better. All right, so this is a fresh install of Affinity Photo. I haven't changed anything, I haven't customized anything, so what you see should be pretty similar to this. The only difference being, you see this top bar here? If you've maximized your window like this, you won't see the top bar. You will see it when you come up to the top and hover. I'm going to make it not maximum so I can see the top bar all the time and so it's clearer, hopefully for you. So what have we got? Well, we've got a toolbar down here and we've also got a whole series of different panels here, histograms, swatches, brushes, whatever. Now, the ones I want you to concentrate upon are the toolbar here, which has various tools, yeah, for doing various different things. And you get the pop-up highlights, that's going to be very useful. And the other thing I want you to take a look at is the layers palette and the adjustment palette. But first of all, we need a photo to work with. So come to File. Open. Here's some various photographs I've got. I'm going to try one at random. Uh, which one? Go kart? No. Halloween? No. Rome. Rome 4. Okay, we'll give that a try. So open the image. Now we want to make various different adjustments to the image. Now, do you remember me saying, on the one hand, I've got these various tools here. Well, I'm going to use one here. Look, come down to this one, the crop tool. I'm going to click on that and you can see I get a box around my image. Now what I want to do is I want to take away some of the outsides of that picture because the statue and the boy are looking a bit small here. I want to make them appear to be larger. So I want to knock out some of the background. That's easy enough. I come to this little square at the top. You can see how my arrow changes and I want to come and drag down a little bit. I'm going to come over to the opposite corner. I'm going to take my crop box and make that smaller from the other end. I'm dragging in and up a little bit. I'm going to try and center roughly where I want. And then when I'm happy with that, press the enter key and bang. I've got rid of all the stuff around the outside and I've got the boy and the statue much bigger in the actual picture. Great. Okay, that's good. So you see on the tool panel, I've got various different tools that can do various different things. Now, the other place where I want to make adjustments, color adjustments, black and white adjustments, things like that, come over to the right side. Now, at the moment, we're in layers. Now, the two things on this side you'll be using a lot are the layers panel and the adjustment panel. Now, what I want to do is, first of all, adjust the overall dark and light balance. I'm going to try doing that using levels. So I'm just going to click on the levels and I get this little dialog box popping up. All right, so what's that? Look, this is a histogram showing all the dark colors and all the light colors. There's the dark colors on this end and there's the light colors on this end. And these are the colors of the tones in the middle, dark to light. I'm not going to go too much into this. It's going to get complicated, but... I want the darks to be a bit darker. So come down to here. This is my black level. I'm going to take it and I'm going to move it. And when I do, if you look at the picture, you can see, look, it starts to get darker and darker and darker and darker. I'm adjusting where the black is on the image. And then when you adjust the black, you adjust the dark greys, the mid greys, you adjust everything. Everything gets squeezed into this new area. So I'm going to take that to about there. The white level, can I adjust that at all? Can I make the whites a bit brighter? I can do, yes, but I don't want to do that too much because otherwise it's going to end up getting too bright and too blown out. So that's worked. I can close the box. That's in place. It's still a bit blown out. If I then come back to my layers palette, 
you can see I've got this, my background, that's the actual photograph. And I've got that levels that I did. I've got something called an adjustment layer that sits on top of the levels. And if I come to the tick box and if I make it the whole adjustment layer invisible, watch what happens to the photo. There's the original photo and there's the adjustment layer sitting on top. This is very, very flexible because I can add more than one adjustment layer. Look, I'll come back to my adjustment panel and supposing I want to adjust the color balance and things like that. Or supposing, look, that boy's a little bit in shadow there. So I'm gonna come down my adjustment options to this option here, shadows and highlights. Click on that. Now I want the shadows to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to erase. Can you see the shadows get deeper? Shadows get lighter as I adjust my slider. How about the highlights? Well, they're a little bit blown out at the moment. I can make the whole thing slightly tamer in the highlight area, or I can take it back up. It's, it's up to me. And then I can close that. And then supposing I want on top of that, the color balance. It's looking a little bit yellowy for my tastes at the moment. So let's come down to color balance. It's another adjustment. And look, I've got all these various different sliders here. I know it's starting to get confusing, but in later tutorials, I'll be covering all these things. Now, supposing with this, the highlights are looking rather yellowish. So I'm going to come to my highlights and I'm going to adjust them. I'm going to make them a little bit more white marble. And what about the shadows? I think they could do with being a little bit cooler as well. So I'm going to make the shadows a little bit cooler. What about the midtones? Well, I quite like some of these yellowy areas. So I want to up those. I want to make those a little bit warmer. I've made my adjustments. And then close this dialog box. Okay, that's my adjustments panel. I've got various different adjustments, various different things I can do. Let's close them up. And then take a look what happens when I go back to my layers palette. Now, do you remember, first of all, we put levels, then we adjusted the shadows, then we adjusted the color balance. All of these things are there as an adjustment layer. The underlying image has not been touched. Look, if I come here, if I shift select all of these and make them all invisible at the same time, watch. There's the original image. It's not been touched. That is part of Affinity Photo's huge flexibility. Great. I can make just the shadows and highlights one invisible. Yep, I can do that. I can make the color balance invisible. I can also go back and I can also readjust those to my heart's content. This is a massive amount of flexibility. Affinity is a very powerful program, but it is complicated and it does take some learning, but that can all be done. Okay, if you got something out of this tutorial, I recommend you subscribe to my channel. The reason being is I'm putting together a tutorial series called Affinity Photo Solid Foundations that will give you everything you need to know to make your photos really sparkle. I'll be covering a lot of how to do things, but also I'll be saying why you would do things, when you would do things, and sometimes when you wouldn't. So subscribe now and stay tuned for forthcoming announcements. Okay, thanks for listening.